celebrate what Jesus is doing throughout the nation and rise up to answer His call on your life. To serve the poor, heal the broken, free the captives, and bring joy to those in need. Find hope, encouragement, and motivation through Overcomers TV. This inspiring network features everyday people and ministries across America who are putting God's love in action. Tune in to Overcomers TV on your favorite app or streaming platform. It's time to overcome. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode on Overcomers TV Live with Lisa Hansen, Power Over Predators. Lisa, thanks for uh, joining us again today. Thanks for having me. So this is our third episode together. This is a, an important topic. Again, it's always like the elephant in the room, things that have happened, happening. It's hard to talk about, but I love your ministry and your heart to help protect children and families, the ripple effects. Um, I always think an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. I'm a cliche guy and uh, just want to allow you to introduce yourself a little bit for someone who may be watching for the first time and uh, introduce our topic for today. Yeah, thank you. Um, I love that quote uh, and the common sense behind prevention stop something before it starts should be where we all go, oh, aha, let's let's try to prevent this before we have to uh, deal with all of the repercussions from everything. And so that's really where my heart's at. And that's really why I founded uh, the, my organization. It's a nonprofit organization. We're based here in Southern Arizona and Tucson, but we are a national and potentially global um, organization to where the message is prevention because we believe that every child deserves to be protected from abuse, from, from any type of exploitation so that they can live a whole happy life. They can uh, achieve their goals and that their, their dreams. And, um, and again, so that families can function well. Um, my, my passion is definitely for moms and dads and, and, and the heart of people. There's, there's a lot of adults who suffered abuse as a child and never had anybody to talk to about it. So they're stuck in their own um, abuse from their childhood. And, and a lot of times if they're anything like me, they're as asking the question, when, when am I going to ever grow up? Why do I always still feel like such a child? Um, there's yeah. nothing wrong with with feeling like a child. In fact, I love I love where Jesus expects us to have childlike faith. Right. But as you as you are processing what happens to you as a child and how it still has its implications and has the repercussions, it can leave you feeling like you you can't get past it and you can't grow out of that. And so that's really where um, power over predators comes into play in just equipping people with recognizing um, what abuse is, how to prevent it, how to ensure your kid's safety, um, and then what, what to do if you realize that something's already happened, your child has already been compromised, where do I go, how do I get the help? Uh, we speak really against the stigma of staying quiet because we believe that shame hides in secrecy. And so well, that's the light. when we talk about it, we're bringing it into the light. Exactly. And as, exactly. as uncomfortable as a conversation may be, they need to be had. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess even if the mindset could shift to, you know, I'm not going to quote the scripture, right? But it's like, consider all things that are painful and struggle as joy, right? So if our mindset is, okay, this is a struggle, but there's joy to be found at the end of it, if we're willing to to experience the reality of, of, of what it is so that we can have joy on the other end of it. Otherwise we continue to avoid the uncomfortable, but the uncomfortable doesn't ever go away. And so then we're just robbed of our joy. And so I just feel like, you know, it's, it's labor, it's work. And there's, if we work and labor in the right way, then, then what the end result is going to be is positive and is joy and healing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And now, over the years, you've, uh, probably talked with and heard lots of testimonies. I mean, you have your own personal story, yep. and your own family, yep. but um, you know, it's good for you and them is, is obviously good for others. Right. So, um, you know, you, you talked a little bit about, well, introduce the topic. We were right before we went live, you were talking about the stigma and this um, uh, suppression idea of, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I felt really, I feel really strongly about how 
how important it is to make sure that when we're using certain language that we're understanding the implications that it has. And there's these battles that we hear, you know, going on in our country today. And, and there's definitely polar opposites on political sides and, and, and language that's being used. And, and what I really want to talk about just is, is understanding the implications of trauma. And then, in, and so instead of using the word trauma as a, um, as a psychotherapist style of word, right. however you want to call it. It's like right. trauma is the enemy's ultimate goal to inflict upon God's children because right. that was, that's what he wants to do, steal, kill, and destroy. So how is he doing that? The word that, that we would use today is he's inflicting trauma on our children. And, and so the number that uh, just came out from... Um, what is it called? The abuse statistics through, th 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 oh, I can't even, it makes me so upset to even see it for 2021. Yeah. No, again, a reminder, yeah. statistics take a long time to put out. So yes, it's a little bit late, but these are the latest numbers of child abuse. And in, in 2021, there were 588,000 plus uh, victims of child abuse in the United States, where the most cases were um, victims one year old or younger, and then between the ages of two and five. And yes. so- and That was 588,000 cases of child abuse. Correct. And just within our country, right? And just within our country, right. Yeah. 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 And so 265,627 children were abused by the age of five. So that that, that number is, is, is unbelievable to me and and again i want to reiterate these are the reported cases and according to those researchers they say i quote furthermore this data may be incomplete and the actual number of children abused is likely underreported right and so so when we talk about the enemy's ability and his desire to still kill and destroy he's going after the most innocent the most vulnerable our children and especially our younger children and because those children don't have a voice they don't have the ability to say no they don't have the ability to defend themselves because they're they're younger they're they they have less power you know when it comes to to those abusers and um and i just the reason that we need to talk about it is because those Without a voice, how are those children yeah. going to get the help that they need? Or their advocate, you know, it's an advocacy program, ambassadors, if you will. Yeah. Exactly, right. exactly. And so that's that's what prevention is. It's advocacy, right? You are out there giving people information that they need to know so that if they are in that situation or if they have experienced it, but nobody's ever advocated for them, that's what we're doing. And, and that's why we have to have this conversation because we are aware of currently today, almost 300,000 children that might not ever had anybody advocate for them. And so we, as a society, I'm not promoting a victim mentality. I am promoting the truth that there are a lot of kids who have been victimized and have suffered a traumatic experience by some kind of abuse. And the numbers show that the highest part of uh, many of the cases of abuse are sexual trauma, you know? And so my organization fights all exploitation against children, abuse and exploitation. So there's a wide range, um, you know, and we all get excited about the topic of human trafficking uh, the problem is, is the abuse that takes place amongst our children is what leads to the situation of human trafficking. Right. We didn't start right. with human trafficking. It starts with, with what we, with those numbers that I just reported. So yeah. we have to be careful in the words that we use when we're fighting for our voice to be heard with whatever side of the aisle that we're on to where it can do a lot of damage. If you're, you, you know, you're, you're not aware of how many people who have been victimized, not not because of anything that they wanted to happen to them, right? But yeah, we could be isolating and and um, yeah, because my thing is 
to to shine a light on that so that they don't stay victims anymore. Right. So now and they get their power back. So and that's the phrase uh, at no fault of their own. A lot of these, you know, and it's always hard to say the word victim because we frown victim mentality, but correct. You know, people who have been victimized or became a victim, you know, they have a mentality and they're processing it. They're healing. They're on their journey out of it. And sometimes even nowadays we tend to uh, have a short attention span or patience with someone who's still hurting and still processing an offense in the rear view mirror. So this is a fine line. This is a, you know, this is, this is, it defines people think it shouldn't. I mean, we try to get past it and move on. And again, not to talk about cliches, but forgive and forget. That's not in the Bible. <laughs> right. You know, and when God says he forgets, it's not like he's got amnesia. He's not holding it against us. He's not, he's forgiven us, but he's given us all a memory for a reason because we've learned from mistakes. You know, he doesn't want us to forget and dementia, Alzheimer's that's like unwanted. Right. You know, for some people, we want to forget certain things and we even try. And I know right. we don't want to relive it. So, I mean, that, this is a big category when you talk about these things through the lens of predators and, and things that have happened. Right. right. But we have to, that helps us, makes us stronger for the next obstacle that we face or challenge or. Exactly. And, and I'm so thankful that you brought that up about forgive and forget and how God designed our brains. We, the way that we, our forward thinking, we are constantly every day remembering the future based on experiences from the past. So, and again, to tie that into a label or a definition, um, I, I like to look at it more as a, we have um, 300,000 children that were victimized, right? That, that were victimized. It was something that happened to them. You don't label them as a victim. That's a problem that we have in our society where you're labeling. And to be very brutally honest, none of us want the victim label on us. We don't want to be stuck in a victim mentality, but we're stuck. We're remembering the future all the time because that abuse is determining how we're going to thrive or if we're going to thrive on a day-to-day -day basis because that the trauma from uh, abuse and exploitation would keep us stuck in that trauma because it doesn't allow us a forward thinking future. And so it's super important that when we cast that vision on somebody that it's like, you do not have to stay stuck there because you are not a victim. You are victimized right. and you have a choice. You're a victor, you're a victor. And that's why we call this Overcomers TV, right? Exactly. That's the verse that we use. First uh, John 5, 4, whoever's born of God overcomes. And this is the victory we have over the world and yep. everything in it, I might add. That's not in the yep. scriptures, but I always like to add that. Everything in it, the <laughs> enemy, all that the world is selling and offering but um uh you know we have a, a comment too thanks for addressing this that's yeah. uh, our brother lynn myers mm -hmm. but um yeah so first john 5 4 whoever's born of god overcomes and this is the victory that we have over the world is our faith so although it happened to us it's part of our testimony yep, yep. Right. And Revelations 12, 10 says the accuser of the brethren who accuses us before God night and day He's allowed to lie too. He could be a liar, but sometimes yep. he uses truth, things that we do that are stupid. And then verse yep. 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and right. the word of our testimony. So, um, you know, and I, I don't know if this is a good time to say this one. What, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I mean, so it's part of your testimony and God's going to use it as ugly yep. as it has been, the things that have happened, to, you, you probably couldn't count the ways that God has used your testimony to make connections with other people and therefore make you a minister of the gospel. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And, and um, I look forward to the day when, when he'll reveal, you know, the, 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 the reality of, of how good, even though it was hurtful, you know, again, we, we talked a little bit earlier about considering things that are painful as joy, the struggle. I was just looking that up as you were talking about that. Cause yeah, I think it's counted all joy when you fall into various trials and tribulations of like, what? It's like at first read, it's like, that's hard to do. That's super spiritual. That's not the natural thing to do, right? 
Right, for sure, because what we want to do is avoid pain, right? And 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 God designed our brains that way. We have a survival brain, you know, and, and so our survivor brain says, don't talk about that. Don't go there. It's going to hurt. But if you don't go there, the hurt doesn't go away and you don't have joy. And so so the 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 work that we have to do to see a positive outcome is a struggle, right? It's right. a trial. It's it's it is even a tribulation. And and it's one of those things that um if we aren't willing to do that, then we have no joy. And and, and our joy is robbed. And and you're right, it's not the natural thing to do, but but if you if you start using the other part of your brain where you you're thinking things through rationally and you're and you're saying, okay, it doesn't joy isn't a feeling, it is an absolute mindset and it is the result of hard work. Um, it's the result of facing things that don't feel good. Um, but I tell you, once you face it and once you get rid of it, you do have a completely different projection for your future. You don't stay stuck in the past. Right. And a lot of people feel very, very stuck. And it's because we don't have these conversations. And so yeah. hopefully the, the more, I mean, the numbers are just, again, these are the reported cases. I'm not trying to exaggerate anything. It's just, I'm trying to validate that there are a lot of people who feel unheard and don't know how to, um, and, and, and they're not having this conversation with, with a person who can understand or even just give them the ability to step into their story. Yeah. And I brought up your website and we're going to go back to that too. Yeah. But um, at the end of the day, um, it's, it's James chapter one. And I always think it's a good opportunity to, to bring, bring it in, um, in context. For those who may be watching who don't really use the Bible like we do as a roadmap, um, I think it has an answer for everything. Mm -hmm. But James says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, mm -hmm. lacking nothing. And if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives it to all liberally and without reproach. And it will be given to him. Yeah. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave, you know, in the sea driven, tossed by wind. For let that let not that man suppose that he'll receive anything from the Lord. He's double-minded and stable in all his ways. Mm -hmm. But that's, you know, in the context, I always say it's always good to, to read the verse and the verses in front of it and the verse around it to keep it in the context. Yep. But if you take text out of the word context, you're left with con. Right. <laughs> and we've all yep. met some people who know how to twist <laughs> scripture <laughs> to yep. have it say what they want. And then Lynn also chimed in with this verse. Romans 8, 28 says that God works all things together for good. If we love God and follow his purposes in our lives, God mm -hmm. uses these, the things Satan meant for evil for good. So that's a good point. It um, is. And again, the things that if we were writing our story, if we were the author and we were um, and I wanted to kind of bring up some of the movies that we see. Um, and as Christians, you know, we won't watch a lot of R-rated movies. And now with Netflix and Hulu, there's all these series like Yellowstone and 18, 1883 and 1923. I mean, the Wild Wild West. And mm -hmm. it was brutal. I mean, you know, the rapes, the incest, the things that were going on. The I mean, people don't like to watch sinful right. behaviors. But if you think about every television show or movie, whether it's Friday the 13th, the guy who's a serial killer hacking up people. I mean, I almost think there's some educational value in that because we tend to look at the world, at least I do, naive and gullible. And there's predators around. There's people who are serial killers in the crowd. They yep. just don't have a sign on their forehead or, right. you know what I mean? You yep. don't know who's who when you're at the mall or at a football stadium. But there, in a multitude crowd that size, there's all kinds of people that are doing deviant behaviors and we don't know it and we're right. breathing the same air. So I almost think it kind of opens our eyes, takes the blinders off a little bit to realize you're in a dangerous place, the world. Right. Right. So, but you know, so there's a, you know, there's a good debate on both sides. Do we want to watch that meditate on what's true, praiseworthy, the Philippians four, eight stuff, or do we use it as, Hey, uh, next time I'm in a situation, you know, beware, danger, beware, you know, so it's, there's an educational value to it. I think. 
For sure. And, and again, it's, it's just knowledge. Uh, you know, if you choose not to look, then you're choosing foolishness. You're choosing to be uneducated. You're choosing the opposite of wisdom, right? And, and wisdom would say, there's a way to gain awareness and understanding just by looking at things that are real, you know, and, and again, these numbers are real. And um, there's over 760,000 registered sex offenders in the United States alone. Right. Real. Those I don't know people. anybody. I mean, I've, I've maybe two or three people uh, have told me they went on the website and put in their address to see who's around them. And that's been available for a while. Long time. Right? time. Yeah. And I haven't done it. Um, so, I mean, I, I haven't pulled, but that's an interesting question. Next time I go to church and this topic comes up, I'm going to ask them, what's the website that they can go to, by the way, do you know? Um, for uh, to get the location of predators in your community? Yeah. I don't know it off the top of yeah, my head. We'll so have it next show, but yeah, we can do a little research about. on that. That's a good. You got to know your environment. I mean, you're swimming with the fishes. Right. <laughs> you got sharks in the tank. Exactly. So That's a dangerous fish in the ocean, right? So exactly. Big and fish again, eat the little fish. <laughs> right. And and it's I use that metaphor a lot. In fact, one of my posts last week was just a picture of a hand sticking up out of the water and sharks swirling around it. You know, and and it's like, hey, parents, this is your kids online. Yeah. You know, they're they're swimming in shark infested waters and the sharks are taking them down wow. and, and you've got to be aware. So the numbers, you know, are what they are. And so just like you said, we're swimming, we're swimming in shark infested waters, but nobody's throwing our kids a lifeline. And parents are are not aware of the threats that their kids are facing. And, and you know, and it's like, gosh, you just put it all together and, and it feels very overwhelming, but at the same time, it starts with you and your knowledge and your awareness and your education. And and then what do you do with that information? You ensure that your kids are safe. And then you ensure that their friends understand that this is a safe place, that if they have anything going on in, in their world, um, that they it's 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 an insurance policy i mean we all buy insurance for our houses for right. our cars yeah. for our for for our health this is a way to ensure that we stay connected to our kids that we're doing everything that we can because just because we buy car insurance doesn't mean we're not going to be in an accident right so what you and do as keep that analogy of, going forward and the ocean there's a lifeguard exactly. you are the lifeguard you're the parent, you are the lifeguard parents, the adults yeah, you know, we got to keep our eyes open for those yep. that are drowning or, you know, for predators. Who's the lifeguard, right? Uh, raise Thank your hand. you to Lynn for yeah. for finding that website for us so we could post it today. That was awesome. Yeah. And uh, there he goes. Is that it? Yep. Yep. Um, there we go. Um, so NSOPW.gov, United States Department of Justice National Sex Offender. It's a website provided by the U.S. Department of Justice to provide a free Nationwide search for sex offenders registered by states, territories, Indian tribes, mm -hmm. and other uh, District of Columbia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh. Thank you, Lynn. Yeah. Awesome. It's great to have some comments. And you know, I'm a rabbit trail kind of guy. This is our third show. You probably picked that up on I me. Mean, women stay focused. They've got a plan. And, <laughs> and you know, I'm the guy who's always like, "Hey, look, a rabbit over here," and we go down a rabbit trail. But did you finish what you wanted to talk about when we talked about the language? Because I know. Um, and, it, you know, the, the woke society and, you know, anybody with a cause or a position between social media, you'd almost make it look like every like it's equal out there. But there's still a very small percentage of people who are trying to normalize what we would call sexual deviant behavior. Oh, they're there. It's, it's a small group, but they have a very big platform. And, um, and, and, and I also think too, that it's so intentional that, um, you know, and, and they're, they're not even hiding it anymore. They're just, they're just not hiding it. So it's, uh, you know, we have language that now we're not supposed to refer to a pedophile as a pedophile. We're supposed to, we're referred to them as a minor attracted person. Yeah, that's, just, and, that's retarded. And that, that's the word I'm going to use. I get, there's no softer word for that. <laughs> It is, it's, for me, it is, it's so evil because now what you're saying is you're validating abuse. You're validating somebody's deviant behavior by calling them something that sounds a lot better than a pedophile. And, and so I, you know, definitions matter, words matter. And Not to make light of it, but it's the same thing with toilet paper and bathroom tissue. 
Right. You know, garbage right. man, janitorials, technician, you know, I mean, yes. you try to make things sound better. And I think, you know, you take that and start applying to this. Yeah. And right. Like, so, yeah, language is super important because it really comes out of definition who, when they're going through school, doesn't have a vocabulary list every week and trying to figure out how to spell it and what the definitions are. Right. You know, and, and, and we're trying to redefine some things. But um, yeah. oh, crazy. Yeah. What we're doing. But did Isaiah say, woe to those who call evil, good, bitter, sweet, sweet, you know, light, dark. I mean, they're just it's it's a flip. Yep. And um, but they need the gospel. I mean, that they're just raising their hand saying, you know, someone needs to speak the truth to me. Exactly. And one of my last shows, it's like Jesus says, I am the way I am the truth. I am the life. He didn't right. say, I'm going to show you the way I'm going to give you some truth. I'm going to sh show you the life. He says, I am, I am, I'm, I'm that. Yeah. So for us, it's always a springboard into, because that's, what's going to change their heart, change their mind. Right. And bring them to repentance, to rechange the way they think. And that's really what that word repentance means. For the longest time, I always thought repentance meant stop, you know, drinking, drugging, sex, whatever, whatever the sin was to stop doing the sin. Repentance really starts with a change of mind, which changes your heart, which then changes your behaviors. You stop doing those things. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and it's interesting because the word repent in certain, certain circles would um, have a, a really heavy, almost authoritarian, like you're in trouble and you need to, uh it's 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 such it's a heart change it is literally a heart change and it's awareness and i again i even love i love to play around with the whole topic of being woke and it's like i am awake woke <laughs> woke doesn't mean anything to me i am awake and that's what people need to be and it's and i think that it's interesting how they've used that word to define a generation of people that um that are not awake right. um that are being lied to and and so right yeah and it's and and again because we are redefining things i was at a conference called redefining safe because what they're wanting to do is change the definition of what safe is and, wow. and it's just like whoa you yeah. know again like change the definition of what abuse is change right. the definition of what a pedophile is change the definition of what a human being is Whoa, right. we are right. taking it to to another level. But for me, what we have to be aware of is is recognizing that we are in the presence of people who have been victimized by abusers who need truth because their understanding of their value is already skewed because somebody redefined their value by abusing them. And we want to give them an impart to them the truth of all of those that does not define you that abuse doesn't define you uh the, the title victim doesn't define you right. um these are the things that you know like you said victory overcomer conqueror right. hero for me you know again yeah. amen just, amen that's a good word love that hero heroes of the faith that's what we have in the bible and they're just people like us we yep. have a few minutes left i do want to introduce your website a little bit Thank more you. i'm going to navigate it so i mean we can go on for an hour, but we try to keep these as 30 minute shows. We'll, yep. we'll do some more and we'll even have a landing page on our Overcomers TV live for power over predators and go back and watch some more episodes. But um, talk about ways people can get involved, contact you and, um, you know, obviously join uh, and donate. It takes funds to do any kind of ministry. Mm -hmm. Financial support is important, correct? It is. It's very important. It's very helpful. Um, we we do function solely off of uh, donations from from people that uh, just want to get behind and rally what we do. Um, this is a duplicatable process in any community. This program is available to anybody anywhere. Um, I think too. I would love after we go through this. Um, we have free memberships. We have subscriptions to where, you know, there's uh, professional development included. Um, and, and we update our content every two years just to make sure that we're staying relevant. Um, but I really want to encourage you to check on, click on the MACE page um, because MACE is my grassroots volunteer opportunity. Uh, it is Mothers Against Child Exploitation because I believe that 
what moms especially are concerned about is their children's safety. And I know that dads, men feel the same way. So this is not limited to just mothers. Anybody who wants to move against child exploitation, there are some very simple ways to start. Two minutes a month is just joining and following us on social media. Uh, getting the word out, tagging and sharing, because all I produce, all I provide, is is reality, is truth. It is it's awareness, and so yeah, you just literally put in your information. My goal, what I'm hoping to do, is to get a million members to join this grassroots movement, and if a million people commit to one buck a month, twelve dollars a year, right. Wow. Um, what yeah. we can do with that funding is provide a lot of care for people. The money that I'm encouraging people to invest in this movement goes right back into communities, right back into kids, right back into families. It doesn't go to my salary. It goes to kids, communities, and schools. And so it's on that site. People can learn a little bit more of what it's what it looks like to join, to, to move against child exploitation, um, cause we all, we, we can all do it at different levels. It might feel overwhelming, but when you realize, man, I can make a huge difference by just following and sharing and posting information, raising awareness. Yeah. You're one of my favorite people. <laughs> just yeah. other people have knowledge and, and gain wisdom so that they can learn how to ensure that the kids that they love and the kids in their communities are safe. That's awesome. That's incredible. Well, I'm going to join up as soon as we're done. I, I didn't want to do my credit card information for the whole world. Of <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'd love to close our broadcast with prayer. Sorry, I meant to zoom out here real quick. And um, I'm a ladies first kind of guy. If you can lead us in prayer, I'll close. That's, again, very powerful. I think we underestimate the power of prayer. But as we pray together, we touch and agree. God shows us our next steps, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Father, I just thank you that you are with us always and that your heart is for us to uh, have joy. Your heart is for us to be free. And um, we thank you for the sacrifice that you made on the cross for our freedom. And God, um, I just pray that you would encourage and move in the hearts of your people to um, to start taking care of your little ones, to, to really become aware of what they're facing and to fight for them because right now they're, 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 they're losing the battle. So I just pray for a, a movement of, of your people to, to gather together and to protect your children in Jesus name. Amen. And Lord, I thank you for our partnership in the gospel. Those listening, those are going to hear it and rehear it later on podcasts mm -hmm. and, and broadcasts and yeah. all the platforms that we have to speak truth in love. And um, Lord, we know even you said, Jesus, blessed is he who's not offended mm -hmm. because of me. And uh, the world we live in today, again, talking about some of these topics, there's going to be a very, very, very small percentage of people who do get offended, but that's not going to keep us from speaking truth. So, Lord, again, we just pray for that boldness and, again, tact and all that we need. Uh, you said you were sending us out amongst wolves, uh, your disciples, and to be wise as serpent and gentle as doves. So yeah. I pray for that mindset. I thank you again for our partnership as we continue to talk about these conversations, as we plot and plan future episodes and topics, help us to focus on the things you want us to focus on. And again, we do lift up that goal. I believe you put that on Lisa's heart to have that million people, a million uh, advocates uh, mm -hmm. who are putting money where their mouth is to make a difference, to get in front of this. And again, to prepare and equip uh, the body of Christ and children in general mm -hmm. Uh, from when they go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. It's not if, it's when they go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a predator that they'll be equipped to withstand the evil one and have done all to stand. Help us to put on that full armor of God it talks mm -hmm. about in Ephesians 6. All this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Sorry, that was almost a sermon prayer. Uh, <laughs> can't help it. But uh, nope. yeah, as you start praying, things come to mind, right? And yep. You, you visualize it. That's yeah. awesome. Lisa, you rock. And uh, we'll do another episode next month. I always like to close with the fist bump. My camera's a little far away. Boom. Awesome. Very good. And uh, yeah, check out the website if you guys haven't uh, written it down or looked at it yet. Power Over Predators, powerpredators.org. There's the number 520-210-9555. Awesome. Good Thanks stuff. so much. You're welcome. Appreciate you. You too. Until our next episode on Overcomers TV Live, may you and your families be blessed. Amen.
promos and commercials to full-length shows. Horizon Media Studios can script, voice, and fully produce programming for television, streaming, and other media. For 15 years in 250 ministries, this Christ-centered 501c3 nonprofit ministry is dedicated to high-quality production and helping other nonprofits produce media. Horizon Media Studios is coming to NRB 2023. Be sure to stop by booth 733 and we'll see you in Orlando.